Welcome everyone to New American Youth Ballet Presents. Today, I'm very excited to have a wonderful guest with me who I have been following for a long time. And thanks to our World Nutcracker, we did a project together with Ms. Clarista Aylin, all the way from Indonesia. So we've been excited to be a part of some of her classes and her amazing workshops. So let me just thank you for taking the time to visit with us. And you've been so kind to Camila. And she loves yes, thank you. So let me ask you, how has the, the pandemic changed you as a, as a ballet teacher? I think it, it's, it's both like good and bad, you know, like the good thing, like we can always learn from someone from abroad, right? Like what happened to Camila right now, then yes. it connects us, right? Even more, even broad, we can um see each other we can learn from each other and then we can grow together yes i think it's very good impact too right it's good to focus on the positive aspect of it yeah true, we, true. We, know. we always learn from something yeah. <laughs> even though it's bad or good it doesn't matter but we can always learn from things that yes. is unexpected yes You as a teacher and all of the teachers in the school are always so kind to the students and being such an accomplished school, how is it you, you have it, this environment, it's not mean or strict, it, you bring out the best in your students with kindness. How do you, how do you manage that? I think for me, it's always good to share with someone rather than just keep it and then we don't know like how to make it like go Yes, uh, and how to make it better. Actually, when we share, we can always learn something. And then it's also comes from my mentors, maybe. Yes, because um, I, I always been taught to like uh, just share and then learn from your experience. That's how you bring the experience to others. Then you can learn even more. Now, the school, you all just celebrated 65 years. And yes, Marluki Dance Academy. Now, can you tell me how did the school get started? What was the philosophy behind the? Okay, the it's actually from my grandmother, Marluki Sijanga. She opened the school when she was fifteen. Wow! <laughs> Through her hard work, her focus, and her discipline. My goodness, when she was fifteen. Yeah. So where did she begin dancing? Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting story. Mm -hmm. So she began dancing um, at her young age, maybe as young as like 12. And then she learned from the Duchess. So she went swimming and then inside the club, they have all the Duchess uh, learning ballet. And then she was there and then she was watching. And then she said like, oh, I think I'm interested to like learn ballet. And what? then she asked. And then she asked her mom, but her mom doesn't have enough money to pay for the tuition. So I think she fought, she fought for it and then eventually she learned ballet. <laughs> wow. And so it's like in the generations of your family? Yes. I need a third generation. As well? Sorry? Mother teaches as well? Yes, she still teaches. That's beautiful. <laughs> and so you've all, you've all developed now is your teaching a mix of Vaganova influence teaching some of your own what what is your your teaching method at the school uh actually at first we do royal but then like now we do the Vaganova and we have we do have our own syllabus I notice a very strong focus on portable 
and for the girls to use their eyes and to really dance, just, just think through what they dance in a very beautiful feminine way. And I, I love that about the training. You know, I see all of their, at the bar, everything is very thoughtful. I think it's very important of how we see people, of how she bring herself, not only in a dance world, but in a, like a real world, right? How we present ourselves, how we bring ourselves into people, how we communicate with people. That's how we learn from them. Yes. And what is your, what is your best advice for students when training on Zoom? Um, I think they need to be focused, yes. Not only looking at their self in the screen, okay? I think they need to always be smart, not only work hard, I would say like work smart and then keep their focus and then be punctual. I think it's very important because we always need to appreciate people's time, yes? Mm -hmm. And always be happy, mm -hmm. appreciate yourself respect to yourself, respect to your friends, respect to your teacher and your parents, the one who supported you from babies. Yes. And I notice a lot of times you and some of the teachers always ask the students, how are you feeling? Are you okay? And I, mm -hmm. I think that that's very nice because sometimes on Zoom, you, it's difficult to understand how the students are feeling. And it's so nice that you all take the time to check in with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As a teacher teaching in this virtual way, it's, it's yes, that's true. You you don't mm -hmm. feel you're not in the same energy in the room, but yes, true, correct. Because we never know what happened, what just happened, what will happen. <laughs> yes, and your students seem to really love to dance. They win many mm -hmm. awards and competitions. And how do you prepare them both technically and mentally for competition? Um, I think we will ask the students if they are ready for this competition because we cannot just run the competition all year long, right? Yes. So we always have like the rest season for them and then we ask them if they are ready for for doing the next competition or doing for the next performance, next audition, next examination. So we always cooperate together with the parents and the students. I think that's a good way to start. Yes. It's a very mm -hmm. important working relationship, isn't it? Yes. A very talented student, but if the parent is not on the same page with the teacher, yes. difficult. Because, yes, because we always need the support from the parents too, and That's the willing, the heart from the girls, the boys, right? Yes. Then the teacher will support and guide them all together. So we all need the cooperation. And yes. When, when did you begin dancing? What was your story? into the ballet world and into the dance world. It's in your family. Mm -hmm. Well, I began dancing when I was like two and a half years old, when I was living with grandmother. So I started in Surabaya. And then at that time, my mom and my dad, they moved to Jakarta. So they left me with my grandma where the studio is inside the house. So every day I would see the children, the kids doing ballet. Then at the age of two and a half, my grandma put me on a leotard, pink leotard and a pink skirt, and I started to dance. <laughs> and how do you stay so energized with the ballet world? Being somebody who grew up in it from such a young age, every day, the classes you teach, the classes in the school, the music, you use a variety of music, the teachers always come in inspired, and it feels like something new to share. You know, sometimes, sometimes it can be easy to burn out as a teacher because we do the same things over and over. But you, you seem very um, enthusiastic and it seems like there's a real joy there. How have you kept that so strong all these years? Wow, it's so nice to hear from you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I think all my girls here, all the girls, all the students here, all the teachers, they all are my motivation, my inspiration, even you there and Camila, they are all my, motiv my, my motivation. It's the I wake up, I always want to be better. I want to make everyone better too, even though there are certain days, it's not always a good days, but we always need to think, okay, we always need to move forward, yes? 
I think that's how like and start your day with um exercise. I think that helps you too to make us happy. And my my last question before I have Camila come in is your students are so polite and well-mannered. Is this how most children are in Indonesia? Or is this something that's trained into them in the school? <laughs> you should train at the very young age to always have a good manner, to have a good attitude. That's how we will bring ourselves later on when we grow, yes, and when we go into a business world, we go into the family. I think that's very important because as a dancer, we don't only look at the technique on how we dance because me, myself, I have the experience as a dancer and they also look at how you behave, yes. your manner, your attitude. I think it's very important how to respect people even to yourself. So we always bring that to our students too. Equally with the beautiful training Camila has, have, you've graciously given Camila, I value the respect that the students have. Every time the class ends, I hear, thank you, miss. Even if it's 200 students, I hear all of them say that. Everyone, you are really brilliant. Smart ballerina, yeah? Hope to see you again. See you tonight. Thank you. 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 It's not something built into the culture, unfortunately. More and more now, what they see on TV, what they listen to, is a, there's a lot of disrespect in our culture. And this is why I was very grateful. Many things went wrong for me during this pandemic, work-wise, dreams I had, but mm -hmm. the connection that we've made has meant a lot to me because mm -hmm. that's something that I felt was missing from the picture. And it's nice to see it alive and, and well <laughs> at your school. Oh, it's such an amazing story you share. Um, what kind of styles of dance do they teach at your school? So we do have classical ballet, we have jazz, we have contemporary, we have hip hop, and then sometimes we also do traditional dance when we do have the performance coming up so we learn from the teacher so we call the teacher and then we do learn you know like the Balinese the Javanese oh, okay. we, yes oh, okay. it's very exciting um what is your favorite full-length ballet Ooh. um I love mermaid have you watched the mermaid in ballet I watched once from the San Francisco Ballet, it's so beautiful. Yun Yun Tan, who danced as a mermaid, as an aerial, the mermaid in ballet. Um, what is your favorite Indonesian dish? Oh, I love soto. I just had soto yesterday. <laughs> you know, soto is like a soup um, with um, Indonesian spice. And the color is yellow. I also like fried rice, Indonesian fried rice. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's so good. So you come to Indonesia, I will bring you around, okay? We have a food venture. <laughs> and lastly, what is the most challenging step uh, to teach for you to, to get across to your students? Is it they're so technically proficient, but what is the most difficult thing to teach a student in ballet, in your opinion? I think their mentality, yes, it's very hard to control because we cannot control person. We can guide them, yes, we can support them, but we cannot control them. So I think we need to have a good cooperation, good communication with them and her parents. That's an excellent answer. Mm -hmm. It really is. Rather than a step, but, but to prepare mentally. Because I'm yeah. sure if you've experienced this, I'm sure you have. I've seen many, many talented students 
not be strong enough mentally to go where they're yeah. to take them. And then sometimes the less talented ones who have the support cool, right? yeah. the and make it. So, yes, so you know. and as a teacher, you do the best you can, but to me, it's 50, 50. If they yes. don't, other half, you know, or they don't, don't yes. facilitate what they need. Sure. You have to be strong to be a ballet dancer. You have, it's not an easy profession. Yes. It's not all, all about the skill. It's not all about the talent. It's about your willingness, your mentality, your focus, your discipline, and your manner. How you behave every day and each day, not only in dance, but in your everyday life. Since how you wake up and how you sleep. Yes, the talent, skill, hard work. Yes, so the talent 100%, but you have no, um, no heart, no willingness to learn, then yes. it's nothing even though you have 100% of talent. So they all need to go together. Yes. Yeah, that's fine for me too. I'm right with you, I get you. <laughs> we might be 12 hours apart, but I'm right with you. Okay, come here girls. So you can introduce yourself and then you say what variation are you gonna perform, okay? Start with Ilona. Hi, my name is Ilona and I'll be performing Kapita Biestrova. So this is Afania, she's gonna perform as Narok. will be Nicole. She will be performing Awakening of Flora.
to say how beautiful you all use your expression, your arms, your eyes. I forget, I know how hard some of the steps are and you take my mind off it. It's just so lovely to watch. Thank you. Like what are some of the things you guys are working on as far as competitions and performances? Um, currently we're working on this year's way AGP. We're already starting to practice from now. Oh, nice, nice. And is this one of the variations you're going to perform? Yes, I'm going to perform this variation. Yeah, it's beautiful. And so you're working on the way. Oh, we're also preparing for our examination. Nice. When also show. What show are you doing? A gala. What is your favorite part about training in ballet? Like, what is it? What does it mean to each of you? My favorite part is like when you work hard, then at the end you'll see your great results. That's what I like. <laughs> and we also could um, meet all our friends and yeah. it's very fun to practice together. Yes. When we go around the world and we have many experiences. Hi everyone. <laughs> Do you guys have any pets at home? No, she has pets. Yes. 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 Have a dog. I, have, I, have, I have a pet. I have a pet fish. <laughs> What's his name? Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pet, um, two dogs, and one rabbit. Oh, hey, wait. Is it what? Um, what is the rabbit's name? Uh, his name is Loopy. Okay. <laughs> Have you guys ever tried hamburger soup? No. <laughs> one time, oh, no. No. Because one time Miss Effie was asking the class. Yeah. And she's, she shared the picture. Um, what is your favorite food? I love sushi. Sushi is my favorite food. It's so good. Do you like it with I like any kind of noodle. It's so good. <laughs> I also like sushi and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and bread. That is the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, soft bread. If you can't put too much of it, you'll get bread. <laughs> and if we ever visit Indonesia, what should Camila do first with you guys? Well, we can bring Camila together with us. We could... Um, Travel. We can go to the new um island in Big Big. Yeah, yeah. 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 we can eat in the China Town. It's so good. Oh. And then take pictures. Yeah. We can take pictures together. And we can go to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the weather like now? What's it like outside? Hot. It's hot. It's very hot. Okay. We can yeah. <laughs> had snow the other day. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> It's supposed so, to be spring. And have any of you been to New York before? Yeah. <laughs> I went to New York for YAGP. Nice. Did you do any sightseeing? Uh, yeah, yeah, we went to Times Square. Nice. Okay. Well, when you guys come, we'll have to show you around and everything will be nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being on. Our show, New American Youth Ballet Presents. She always has a great night. And I love watching you. You're just really beautiful dancers. And I always show my students, uh, you guys, and, and sometimes maybe you can all meet. Yay, thank you. Oh, yeah, oh the snap, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I can do that and push the button. I'll let you, I can't do that and push the button. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.